So hello! On this channel, we talk about independent spirituality and folk magic for free spirits. My name is Aster, and in today's video, we are going to take a look at yet another book that talks about spirit work, which is this little gem here, Communing with the Spirits, the Magical Practice of Necromancy by Martin Coleman. So in a nutshell, it's really very self-explanatory if you look at the title and the subtitle? Subtitle? The, the other title over here, you immediately understand what this book is about and the purpose of the book is to guide the reader through the practice of necromancy. Let's see if I can put it here like this. Nice. But the author makes it very clear that the book is not for beginners and when the topic is spirit work, I usually say that, yeah, this should not be the first thing that you try to do in your magical practice. If you are just starting out, there are other things that um, you should be looking into, not because you can't jump into spirit work, it's just because that in order to do spirit work, you will need it fell down. <laughs> Wait, I have an idea. Let's do it like this. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> But as I was saying, in order to tap into spirit work, you will need some previous knowledge, some other skills. So that's why we usually say that spirit work is not for beginners. It's simply because there are other things that you will need in order to do this. To be honest with you, I don't really think that the author will be watching this video, so I can make some negative comments. Um, the first thing, you gotta keep in mind that this book was published in 98. That's like over 25 years ago. I'm not very good at math, but it's a long time ago. So keep in mind that some of the vocabulary used in there, some points of view, they are kind of outdated and didn't age well. It's things that today are a little bit inappropriate. Keep in mind, this is a work of its time, okay? But that doesn't mean that we cannot extract good information from the book, much on the contrary. Also, I thought that the the author was a little bit too dramatic about how much he stressed the point of the book not being for beginners and like oh you have to be able to hear spirits you need a teacher I mean yeah having guidance having a teacher does help a lot you know somebody to show you little things and all it is very helpful but not everybody have access to that so I think he's a little bit exaggerated in how much he mentions that the book is not for beginners and the information in the book is not for beginners. I mean, if you are starting out with spirit work, I don't see why you can't read the book and can't benefit from the information in the book. If you don't have a lot of experience in spirit work, I still think you should take a look. This book is super interesting and don't let all his talk of you gotta do this and this and that in order to take to better use the information from the book. I thought that was a little bit exaggerated, but yeah, spirit work in itself is not for beginners, but even if you don't have a lot of experience with spirit work, if you are at that stage, you can totally get this book and give it a read, okay? So let's take a little moment to think about why work with spirits of the dead. In my opinion, first of all, spirits of the dead can be very resourceful, especially when it comes to a certain area. If you are living somewhere, the spirit of somebody who has lived there, they will know the area much better than you, they will know little secrets, they will know stuff. So that's very useful for a magical practitioner. Not to mention that contrary to deities, angels and demons, for example, the spirits of the dead have been alive in human condition just like us. So they can relate to us much more easily. They can understand what we are going through, what we are feeling, because maybe they have been in the exact same position as you are when they were alive. Something that will make them like more prone to cooperate with you, because it's that, you know, 
I know how you feel kind of thing, which for some other types of spirits is impossible because like I have mentioned, angels, demons, deities, they haven't been human ever. So they can't relate to feelings and human experiences. On the other hand, however, the author makes something very clear that we should not forget that when we are working with spirits, nobody is doing each other favors. It's an exchange for mutual growth and mutual evolution. And the first thing to be done before you ask for anything or whatever, the first thing is to build a relationship, a warm, friendly relationship with the spirit that you are trying to work with. So there's something that he wrote, I think it was page 51, and I quote, the necessity of building a close, warm, and positive relationship with the spirits of the dead with whom you are working cannot be overstressed. You must become friends and associates, but never lovers. When the topic is spirit work, the author has to mention that because it is a crucial point of the whole thing. I have read three books about spirit work in 2023 and all of them are, by the way, reviewed on the channel. Um, and in all of them, the authors mentioned the importance of building a relationship with the spirit. It's like dealing with people. It's like building uh, bonds and friendships with other people, you know? It's the same kind of thing. You can't expect someone to help you out with something, like help you move or help you, um, like lend you 50 bucks, if you don't know that person well enough, if you have no intimacy with them. Yeah, it's the same thing with spirits. They are not going to help you, like, if they don't know you in the first place. Now, there is a fun fact. There's something that I found super interesting in this book. If you have read uh, Consorting with Spirits by Jason Miller, which, by the way, was the last book review published on the channel. It's going to be linked up here and in the description in case you haven't seen it already. Uh, but at the end of Consorting with Spirits, Jason Miller mentions something about using a human skull as a vessel for communication with spirits, but he doesn't develop on it. And that got me very curious. On communing with the spirits, however, the author wrote a few pages about this topic on chapter two. Those um, tools are known as oracular heads. And I mean, it is something that we, we can't really do nowadays. It would be very complicated to have that kind of device around the house, but it is totally very interesting to read about it. So what's an oracular head? Basically, it is a human skull that you keep and you perform rituals with it. You use certain herbs and you insert things inside of the skull in order to use it as an oracle and communicate with spirits, especially the spirits to whom that skull belonged to. And that thing has been very common in many ancient cultures. I really don't understand the taboo nowadays. Like, that's just a bummer. That's such a bummer. <laughs> He's not teaching you how to make one because I think that this practice would be illegal in most of the countries nowadays. But still, it's just some interesting piece of information that I had never seen being talked about in other book before. Actually, if we want, we could try to make something similar, but with fake skulls. I have this one that I usually keep at my altar, uh, my guardian altar. I used it a lot for ancestor work as well. It's in resin. I'm gonna get a link for it um, and put it in the description in case you want to buy one. And the cool thing about it is that it opens, so we can definitely put stuff in here and yeah, make a ritual out of it. But I don't know, it could work, could work. I'm gonna leave it here, there you go. <laughs> And I was very curious, I have to admit, I was very curious to see what a real oracular head would look like, but I don't think that anybody who has one 
would be posting about it on the internet because body parts, human body parts are such a taboo when it comes to magical practices, especially uh, for people from outside of the practice. Death and dead bodies, even of animals, are such a big taboo. So yeah, I couldn't find anything online about actual real oracular heads, but yeah, I found the topic very interesting. Another point that the author makes in this book is the importance of knowing oneself when you are going to engage in spirit work. Before starting dealing with spirits, it is very important, and also during and after, I think this is some kind of work that we never stop doing, but to, which is the work of acknowledging who we are, the positive and the negative, the light and the dark, because our weaknesses or our dark parts could definitely be used against us or used for the spirit's advantage. You see what I mean? So it is very important to understand how you operate. Also, when it comes to sensing energy, to understand what is a product of your own mind versus what is a spirit communication. And Martin also reinforces the importance of being connected and in tune with your spiritual team, your personal spiritual team, because they can assist you connecting with other spirits, you know, and you don't have to go into that journey alone all by yourself. It is very important. And also, on top of that, starting with your personal team, your ancestors, is the easiest way to begin, because those spirits, they are already available and willing to work with you happily, you know, they are part of your family, they are part of who you are. They decided, like the spiritual team, they have decided to accompany you in this life. So if you reach out to them, they will be ready for it and happy to, you know, reach out back to you. And as a matter of fact, the author of this book spends a long time talking about ancestral connection, what you can do, how. Yeah, it is very interesting. But if you are more advanced, I would say that maybe be the book could get redundant. So this book would be more useful for beginners in spirit work, if you are starting out with spirit work. Yeah, and especially intermediate practitioners, I would say. But if you are more advanced and you have been doing this for years and years, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of useful information out of it. But anyway, for the author of this book, it is fundamental to first and foremost have a very solid relationship with your own personal spiritual team before you start reaching out to spirits from outside of your circle, let's say. And I agree with him, couldn't agree more. So if you get this book, what can you expect? In this book, the author takes the reader through the process of forming a relationship with their ancestors, their personal team, and taking the help of those spirits to reach out to other ones. To the point, you know, one spirit kind of pushes, not, not pushes, drags the other in, like the one spirit will help you connect with the next to the point that you get working spirits and divinatory spirits. And all of that is super useful for the magical practitioner. To be honest with you, I haven't tried the things that he teaches in the book, um, not exactly as he teaches, because right now I am very much focused on my personal team, you know, um, with work and everything. I don't have as as much time as I did before and I really need to set priorities in my practice. So at the moment I'm not reaching out to spirits from outside of my personal circle, but you can definitely tell that this text is written by someone who knows what they're talking about. You can see the experience in between the lines. I found the author to be very realistic, very realistic and down to earth, and the information didn't feel like far-fetched or 
you know it felt very solid and reliable to me when it comes to divination because divination is like one of the allies of the magical practitioner when dealing with spirits when it comes to divination martin coleman suggests two methods the ouija board and he explains how to use an ouija board and also automatic writing as far as i'm concerned apparently automatic writing is kind of a gift that not everybody has so of course you can go ahead and try but it's not everybody who will actually succeed automatic writing and that's okay you know don't beat yourself up if you don't manage to do it i for one i'm, I'm not able to do automatic writing and other things that are definitely um highlights of the book and stood out for me were the parts where the author talks about thought forms and how to minimize spirit influences in us so yeah this is definitely a book that is worth reading and it is my recommendation for you if you didn't know about it before i would say that of all the three books that i have on the channel that talk about spirit work um spirit work by syrian shadow would be uh the beginner stage um and then it's difficult to decide between consorting with spirits and communing with the spirits they are both uh for more advanced practitioners for sure but they are kind of at the same level of expertise i would say so if you are a complete beginner with spirit work i would suggest you picking up spirit work by syrian shadow all reviews are going to be linked in the cards and in the description as well but if you have more experience with spirits this book is going to be useful and also consorting with spirits by jason miller by the way now that we're talking about books and reviewing books and everything would you be interested in taking a look at unfiltered book reviews with my like unpopular opinions <laughs> So if that's the case, you should definitely check out my Patreon page because over there, other than unfiltered book reviews, you have access to exclusive bonus content for only one cup of coffee per month. On my Patreon page, you can get to see a little bit of my personal practice and also get like weekly divination messages and much more. So make sure to pay a visit and take a look. It is going to be the first link in the description down below. And how about you? Have you read this book? What do you think of it? Make sure to let us know in the comments down below, okay? As always, thank you so much for watching and remember, practice makes perfect. So let's go witching. Bye-bye.